So this is uh, for a weekend talk show that I do on Sirius XM. And so uh, it's going to air this coming weekend and on social before that. Um, you're going to hear me do an, an intro and then an extra because you're the last guest of the show. We've saved the best for last. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're coming back from commercial right now. It is the Sean Prue Show here on Sirius XM Canada Talks Channel 167. And the countdown to the Countess is over. Once a model, once a nurse, then a countess, author, philanthropist, actress, and now real f- and now fan favorite Real Housewife and Cabaret star Luanne de Lesep is now performing her new holiday cabaret, A Very Countess Christmas, fresh off displaying the patience of Job with Ramona and Turks and Caicos on The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Season 1. That's a mouthful. She joins us now looking fabulous. <laughs> Happy holidays, Luanne. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Same to you. I want to ask you uh, something about what I think you've landed on, which is contentment and happiness. It seems to me you went through so much uh, marriage breakup, an arrest, uh, facing your drinking. We've seen all of that play out on television, but you seem to be in a really good place right now. I I am. I'm, you know, I get so much joy out of, you know, being back. Um, first of all, you know, working on Housewives, the ultimate girls trip. Um, you know, to have somewhere to go and get dressed up to go during the pandemic was already a lot. And now to be getting through that and to be live performing again and doing my cabaret, which is what I love, is really awesome. You know, I miss the live audience. Um, you know, I I started the cabaret in 2018 before this whole mess happened to me. And um, and how it started was a friend said to me, you know, Lou, you love to entertain. You love to have um, friends over. You love to sing for your friends. Mm. You know, you love to cook and host. Um, and you love to tell jokes. I, I, I got to tell you, you're a cabaret star. And I was like, really? Oh, you think so? And this all happened before, you know, I got into trouble and, and it really saved me, you know, cabaret saved me because I get so much love from the audience. I get so much joy out of doing my shows. Um, I started in 2018. Uh, I did 90 shows in two years. Wow. And I was supposed to come to Canada and I you know, know the pandemic, then, you know, what hit. Yeah. And then we were very so disappointed now, in that. Yeah. Now I'm planning to come uh, in April, in the spring. I'm going to come to um, Toronto and to Montreal. So, you know, it's been really awesome to be able to, you know, come back, have the people, have my fans who support me. They, you know, they love the show. It is really a good time. You know, it's a party. When you come to my show, you feel like you're in my living room. You know, it's, you know. So the- Get along on the ride. Here we go. And you just, it's a journey. You say this, the show saved you. What do you say to listeners who are going through a lot right now um, who don't feel they can push through the experience the way you've successfully pushed through yours? Well, I just feel like, you know, we're our own worst enemies and we just have to be good to ourselves and we have to, you know, give ourselves positive self-talk. I think that gets that gets thrown on the wayside. I think people don't understand how important it is to manifest your dreams. And if you look at anybody from Tony Robbins to any spiritual mm-hmm. or, um, you know, aspirational speaker, they will say that, you know, what you tell yourself and what you think about yourself means a lot. And yeah, I felt really shitty about myself, but I said to myself, am I going to let that ruin the rest of my life? Am I going to let this keep me down the rest of my life? Or am I going to suck it up, pull myself up by my bootstraps and keep it moving? You know, I'm not somebody who lives in the past. So I look at my past, I take from it. um, And hopefully we learn from it. And I feel like, you know, uh, a lot of people dwell in the past. And when really the rearview mirror is a lot smaller in your car than the windshield for a reason. So true. It is. And, you know, and I think that 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 positive self-talk and those things that you say to yourself and the things that you think about yourself are so important. And, um, you know, I do a lot of I try to do a lot of meditation with gratitude and just be thankful that, you know, you can even breathe. And, you know, that goes back to my nursing days. I'm a nurse as well. So I took care of a lot of people that were really ill. I saw a lot of people die. And so I think people don't um, take enough gratitude in the fact that just being alive every day mm-hmm. is a gift. Completely agree with you. Um, yeah. What was what was the one positive thing you said to yourself during this that you think helped the most? Um, that there's 
there's going to be an end to this whole story. Right. You know, there's been pandemics in the past, you know, throughout history. And, um, and this is another one. I mean, unfortunately we have to live through it, but there is going to be an end and we're finally getting there, I think. And, um, and you know, that's, that's keep it positive, keep it positive And, you know, um, it's day by day. And whether, you, you know, it comes to people that are not drinking, I take it day by day or, or going through struggles in their life. You know, mm -hmm. you take it day, by day, minute by minute, one step at a time. And if you think about, you know, oh, my God, Kristen Chenoweth just texted me. If you think about <laughs> he's going on live at the Met tonight. Um, if you think about and I have a show tonight, too, and I wanted to go to her show and she wanted to come to mine. But anyway, um, if you think about you know, that the moment and not thinking about, oh my God, what happened to me? Or, oh my God, what am I going to do? And just, you know, take it moment by moment and day by day. It, it really will help a lot. Switching gears, the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip season one finale airs tonight at 10 p.m. ET on Slice. Fans can also watch live and on demand and catch up on past episodes via Stack TV. Ultimate Girls Trip, Luann, where Ramona was the ultimate a-hole sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> annihilating and alienating almost everyone there. What's the secret to handling appalling behavior? You know, um, <laughs> John... Chooses words carefully. <laughs> I, well, you know, it's funny. I said to Ramona before we left for the trip, I said, Ramona, she goes, you have my back, right? And I said, I have your back until you put your foot in your mouth and then you're on your own. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I meant that it's, you know, I can't make excuses for someone's behavior, you know? Um, so it just started, she got off on the wrong foot and kept, kept getting on, you know, on the wrong foot. And, um, and, you know, it's funny because I sing about things like this in my music, like chic, say la vie, say bon, say bon. The little things can take you down. So it's best to brush them off, you know? And that's what I kind of do with Ramona. I'm like, so used to her bad behavior that it almost doesn't phase me anymore. I kind of just let it go. Um, but those girls were not having it. They weren't having it. And they weren't having it on your behalf either. They no, were sticking no. up for you and, and wondering why you put up with it. I know. I know. Well, you know, listen, I, uh, at some point, uh, Teresa says, you know, you got to get a backbone. For me, having a backbone is being able to walk away and be the, be the bigger person and not wasting your energy on somebody that just doesn't yes, get it. I completely agree with that. So I, the other thing I noticed on on um, watching this this series is what a terrific flirt you are. <laughs> <laughs> Those scenes with Michael the concierge at Triton Villa where all the ladies stayed in Turks and Caicos. Um, what's your best advice in this era of social distancing and consent when you're not allowed to touch anybody for flirting? I know, I, I get that. I, I've gotten that question recently. Well, you know, listen, I think there's a lot to be said with your eyes. A lot to be said in your smile right. <laughs> and a lot to be said with the human connection you know we just connected you know and i think either there is that spark of chemistry or there's that spark there of isn't. interest but you have to let people know also that you're interested so you know listen i didn't know in the very beginning that michael was married because I mean, he wasn't wearing a ring i had no idea so and then when i found out he was it's like well at least he still knows how to flirt and that's positive. You know, people don't give each other compliments anymore like they used to. I think people are afraid. That's true. And I think that people need to do that because everybody just wants to be loved. They want to know that they look good or they smell nice or, you know, but there's a way of saying things and a way of flirting, you know, that is, I think, innocent. Um, and obviously, you know, if you're in an office workplace or in an environment that is not appropriate, obviously you have to be careful. But here we are on an island in bathing. <laughs> um, and, you know, and and it's funny because I get asked this in my cabaret show because I do a Q&A with my audience and they ask, well, did you have you heard from Michael's wife? And I said, no, but I've heard from Michael, which is a joke. But right. but sure, he um, he said to me, oh, my God, I can't even tell you the amount of attention I'm getting. I had no idea, you know, and and so we were just having fun. I think it was good, clean fun and how flirting should be. Uh, many fans of uh, New York City thought last season was too woke. Did you think it was too woke? Um, well, I think it was, you know, it's, it's like saying you're too careful wearing a mask now with COVID, right. you know, 
you know, can you be too well? At that time, it was really heavy on Black Lives Matter. So I don't think there is such a thing. I think that people can, you know, go overboard. Um, and I mean, one of my best friends said to me, who is, um, who is black said to me, you know, you're so woke, you're asleep. So, <laughs> which I thought was very good. I won't say who that is, but somebody very famous. And, and I think, you know, it can be, I, you know, listen, I, that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I want to, um, turn and, uh, talk to you more about your cabaret success. You signed a multi-year deal. Um, for Countess and Friends back in 2017 with Live Nation. And it's it's just grown and blossomed. Tell us about turning the grain of an idea into success like that. What does it take? Well, I think it takes, a, you know, kind of a, um, a certain passion and love of music. You know, I, I've always loved music. I always like singing for my friends. I don't take myself seriously. You know, when I started this show, it was like on a whim, like, okay, you know, I'm going to do this because I I, I, I want to do it. And I, I, you know, at that point I needed to rise from my ashes because I had literally exploded my life. And I thought this is a great chance for me to show people who I am and who I really am. And because of that one bad night in my life should not mark me as a person mm -hmm. for my life. So, um, so, you know, it takes grit, it takes guts um, and it takes, um, it takes uh, a certain amount of being fearless. And uh, believe me, I was terrified because they, you know, they could have easily ripped me apart. Um, but, you know, I was doing what I loved and I feel like there was no, and there still kind of isn't anyone doing what I do. You know, I'm, I, I'm you know, doing cabaret, pop culture, um, a fashion show all in the same night you know, um, because I wear my Giovanni dresses, I get dressed for people, I show up for people and, and I sing the things that I love. And, um, and I think, you know, being passionate about what you do and having a purpose um, takes you a long way. We just got the wrap up signal here, uh, Luann. I want to wish you and Victoria and Noel a uh, really beautiful Christmas <laughs> and all the best. In seven. <laughs> already, well, we've watched them grow. I know. Your show. All the yeah. best in 2022. Thanks. Same to you, Sean. Thank you so much. That's it for another Sean Pru show this weekend then and this year. Happy holidays and a winning 2022 to you. Catch me on Simone and Sean on Instagram at 3 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. I'm on Twitter at Sean Pru and hear past shows on the SiriusXM app on demand or visit SeanPru.com where they are podcast there. Until next time, I wish you peace and love. And that's my dog barking in the background. <laughs> See you later. Bye, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Janice. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Cheers. Cheers.